So another example let's let's give is Jacobi iteration in two dimensions. So let's try a two-dimensional matrix and uh, do another exercise to figure out uh, what the iteration would look like. So the two-dimensional Poisson's equation would look like u of i plus 1j plus u of i minus 1j plus u of i j plus 1 plus u of i j minus 1 minus in this case, we have 4 times uij because we have derivative in both i and j directions and the delta square. So delta here, let's say, let's put delta x. So let's, the assumption here is delta x equal to delta y, right? Otherwise, we have different coefficients. <coughs> this is equal to fij. Okay. And... Here, can we identify what are the lower diagonal parts and what are the upper diagonal parts? Yes. It depends on how you order the vector, right? But in Jacobi iterations, it actually doesn't matter which part is lower diagonal, which part is upper diagonal. Why? Because they are all moved towards the right-hand side. And only what is left on the left-hand side? The diagonal part right so so let's just uh, pick out the diagonal part that's this one is diagonal part and everything else goes towards the right hand side so what we have is u i j and uh, let's also divide both sides by 4 like minus 4 over delta x this would be equal to minus delta x squared over 4 times fij and then the rest is plus ui plus 1j plus ui minus 1j plus uij minus 1 uij plus 1 the whole thing divided by 4 right so now look at the similarity so previously we have this form and now we have this form it seems like my uij for the next iteration, k plus 1, is some contribution from the uh, right-hand side of the matrix plus some kind of average, right? In previously, just uh, divide by 2, now uh, divide by 4. An average of the four nearby entries. So this is in some sense characteristic of the Poisson's equation because the Poisson's equation you get a smooth solution the solution is a slight contribution from the right hand side which is on the order of delta x square plus an average of the nearby solutions this is what gives a smooth solution that has a curvature equal to what what you want it to be all right so going back to MATLAB and uh, let's make it a little bit cleaner by giving a script uh, Jacobi Poisson 2D okay so to start we are going to actually we let's let's also use this opportunity to look at an interesting phenomenon like how the error reduces in Poisson's equation in Jacobi iteration so let's use uh, a picture over here so the picture is uh, uh, a little bit of uh, there is an interesting story about this if you look at look at this oh. if I want to open it uh, outside MATLAB so this is a uh, this is the picture we want to use as the solution to our Poisson's equation Right, it's a kind of a standard test case picture in image processing. So let's just uh, uh, use this one. So what we have is a uh, error using UI import. Uh, no, we, we want to do import wizard. Uh, this is 128 by 128, uh, uint 8. So let's create variable matching preview, finish. 
So we just uh, loaded the matrix into memory. The matrix is called the uh, len bw. So let's say u exact. We want to construct a, uh, a Poisson's equation whose exact solution is what we just uh, loaded. So it's a matrix 128 by 128 by 3, but like uh, we don't want the color, so we'll just uh, take the first entry. Okay, so if I run it, and uh, let's, uh, I am sure is visualizing uh, u exact. So that's our variable now. Okay, so we are good. So with that u exact, and let's assume a zero boundary condition, let's construct the right hand side. That is going to give us this solution, right? This is a, a method of manufactured solution that is used uh, also in PDs when you try to validate your solver, look for convergence. So you, you manufacture a solution and construct the right hand side so that the solution you have is the solution you expect to get. So my B would be equal to zeros uh, you so the shape well I would just uh, say 128 that's something we know and uh, okay so I think I also want to make u exact to be float of u exact otherwise my u exact is going to be integers so let's run this so my u exact uh, Okay, I think I need to be doing double. Okay, so now that works. My u exact is gonna be, yeah, containing now, uh, they are still integers, but the type is now double. Okay, so my b is equal to that, and uh, let's put my delta x to be one over 128 plus one. So that'll be my uh, grid spacing. So what I then have is my e is my b okay for i goes from 1 to 128 for j goes from 1 to 128 my b i j is going to be okay so let's here make a trick so let's here make a u expanded also which is a u including the boundaries it'll be zeros 130 so I'm adding, I'm padding some zeros on all the boundaries, so that makes my, so, so that I avoid a bunch of if statements in computing B. And the U expanded would be 2 to n minus 1, 2 to n minus 1 would be assigned to U exact. Alright, so that's a, a, a proper way of putting the boundary conditions. So B of ij would be equal to u expanded uh, i j plus one. So all the indices are going to be shifted by a little bit. So, so okay. So if we don't want it to be shifted, what we can make b equal to zeros one thirty, and then our i is going to be going i and j are both are going to going from 2 to 129 right so we are iterating over the interior grids so aij is going to be uh you expanded uh, i plus 1j plus dot 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 you expanded i minus 1j Expanded i and j plus one. Copy and paste j minus one. Lastly, we want to minus four times u of i j. I j. The whole thing should be divided by delta x square, right? Okay, so that way we compute the B that is required to make U exact the solution. Okay, so now let's run it. Uh, it does give us what we want. So if I, I am show the B 
that'll be something we don't understand. But it is uh, uh, it is the right hand side that's supposed to give us the exact solution. So let's apply. Uh, so now let's apply the Jacob iteration method to solve for b. Okay, so initially let's make a u that is equal to zeros, 130, 130. So it's okay to include also the boundary conditions because we know it is what it is. So let's start with the u that has the correct boundary conditions. Okay, and uh, for k, let's do Previously, we had a thousand iterations, so let's do a thousand iterations. So a thousand iterations for each iteration, we are going to follow our formula. So u of k plus one would be equal to minus delta x squared divided by four times my right hand side, which we called b instead of f, right? Okay, and. Uh, uh, then we are going to apply in this, which we can copy what we had in this iteration, paste it. Uh, we want to indent it correctly. Then instead of this iteration, I'm going to say uk plus 1ij is equal to itself plus uh, this would be u. This would be u. Uh, this would be u. This would be u. Divide by four, and uh, I'll get rid of the expanded. The solution u is also expanded, but like we called the expanded. Uh, so, so this is this is our previous iteration u, right? So, I think we are following uh, the formula we had before. Is it uh, this, 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 this? Right? I think we are correct. So let's run this to see what we get. Uh, we have, did we run this before? So we get a u and uk plus one. Okay, so so we see it's a it's an array of 130 by 130. The boundaries are zeros because we never uh, we never change them, and the interior uh, has a bunch of numbers. So let's let's look at what u is. Uh oh. So looks black. So what does that mean? Get a bunch of forty. So this doesn't seem right. Okay, so let's look at what we get wrong over here. You get to assign u to b. Oh yes, I forgot to assign u equal to u k plus one. Thanks. So, so practically, we did a thousand, but like we only did uh, one iteration because we never changed the u to be the uh, next iteration. So, so let's let's first try it with a hundred iterations to see what we get. Okay, so that's done. Okay, now we look. We are looking at a continuous uh, array of numbers. That seems to be a lot better. So I am sure of you. Okay, it does give us something that looks like the original picture, but the uh, the I think the coloring was wrong because these numbers are not properly scaled. Uh, so so I am sure is very sensitive to the type of the array. So if the type is integers, it assumes I have zero to two hundred and twenty five. So like the proper color. If uh, the array is floating points, I think I need to scale them to zero to one. So what I should be doing is I'm sure you divided by 255. That should be the proper scaling. Okay. So now we are looking at something that resembles the original solution. 